This PvP build that you're witnessing on screen right now is one that you absolutely need to try because it is completely overpowered in very small scale fights in 1v1s. As a matter of fact, this build won a dueling tournament and it is not my own original build. I will give credits later in the video, but this is essentially a 4v1 at this point over a uh, open world chest. And I have absolutely no problems holding my own. This build has infinite endless sustain. It has very high burst. This build is not meant for ZVZs. It's not meant for very large scale. In a 3v1, 4v1 situation, you can hold your own. You can sustain your mana forever. You have very high burst against other healers, able to burn them down and whittle them down. You simply cannot die with this build. It is nearly impenetrable unless you are just vastly, vastly outnumbered. This build is amazing for just, like, dueling. Dueling people for silver in town. This is the absolute go-to GOAT build. And I'm going to show it to you in just a bit, but I want to show you that um, not only is it great for being by yourself, but even if you happen to have a teammate with you, or just someone in your same faction, you can toss them a very powerful fight-changing heal, and you can still heal yourself while healing someone else, which is absolutely amazing this thing pumps out really high auto attack dps though it cannot chase it is not a chase weapon you cannot chase a player down and kill them but uh, if they if they you know misjudge your power you can burst them before they realize they're being bursted you will absolutely be able to out dps almost everyone else they can also heal themselves this is the most overpower build you have to try this build I'm going to go over it in just a second and show you the items required. But you can see here that uh, this chest is basically mine. No one can take it from me. It's uh, It was only like 40k. So this is the tournament winner, Jaden of Smurfing Monkeys. And I'm going to talk about his build and why it just kicks so much dang butt, alright? So here it is on my character. And I'm only using, a, I only used 8.3 in that clip. My armor is 8.4. But here's essentially how it works and how it synergizes. Alright, you have many different options for your W2. I'm using Revitalize for a few reasons, because if you get two ticks out of this, it's actually worth more than using Protection of Nature. It also has a much lower cooldown, especially when you eat it with a pork omelette, and if you used a, a, a 7.2 pork omelette, it's even faster cooldowns. I use a torch because I like the auto attack damage, but a Mist Collar also works just as well. Now, the Shoes of Tenacity, this is why we can't chase people, but this thing works so amazingly well in so many different ways. What it does, for those that don't know, it turns you invisible, but it also gives you a very high magical damage auto attack, or any damage that you deal will apply bonus magic damage one time for the next three seconds. But what this boot is amazing for is just in world PvP, there's enemies all over, especially if you're in a static dungeon, which I really love hunting players especially Shadow Callers with this build. This is my favorite way to kill Shadow Caller Static Farmers, is this build right here. If I see this build as a Shadow Caller main myself, I run away. But luckily, people aren't that smart yet. But now that this video is coming out, oh boy, I'm in trouble. Anyway, so what happens is if I aggro a bunch of static mobs, I just go invisible. I drop aggro immediately. They go to the next closest target, usually whoever I'm killing. And look, the cooldown is so short. This is this is without uh, Pork Omelette, by the way. With Pork Omelette, check out the cooldown reduction on this bad boy. It's 9.6 seconds. Every 9 seconds, I deal 500 extra damage. I go invis. I drop aggro. I also get a little run speed boost, so it helps me kind of jank around. Also, another use for this is that you go invis, and then you revitalize yourself, and people will never, ever interrupt you before the first tick. As long as you get two ticks out of that revitalize, it is worth it over any other W spell that you can possibly have. The E spell is just a big, chunky burst heal that you can cast twice, once on yourself, once on someone else, or on two other of your friends. So it is a huge, chunky heal. This cannot be purged. This cannot be overwritten, interrupted, stopped. There, there is nothing they can do. I mean, yes, healing reduction will kind of mess it up a bit, but it's still a bit, it's one of the burstiest heals in the game, right? And then, of course, for Q, you have your offensive spell, your thorn growth. Now, uh, you could just auto attack people with this build and still win, but it would be really slow. This makes it where if they're standing in the thorns, they're taking huge damage. This also marks them with thorns charges, so when you auto attack them, you deal huge damage. Check out the tooltip. Alright, so you do damage versus players. 
uh, every half a second while they're in that circle. You can constantly cast these circles, especially with the cooldown reduction. It's 2.42 seconds. But, you know, you can just flood the battlefield with these circles. Oh, no, two seconds? Time to put more circles down. So you could be a supporter if in a group fight. You know, in a 1v1, you're putting down dangerous, hazardous stuff on the ground that people are stepping in. And so, as you can see here in the tooltip, your auto attacks deal an additional 167 magic damage. So, look at this. Like, I already auto attack for over 100 damage. Then I auto attack for 167 additional damage. The boots give me another 500 damage. It doesn't stop there because we are pumping damage like crazy. Our Thetford Cape has a cooldown of 15 seconds, 362 magic damage with each hit. And this hit can hit up to four people. And it doesn't end there. We have technically two interrupts of fear. A Reflect Stun, let me talk about that. So, next up we have the Cala Purity. This is 984 magic damage. It also interrupts casting. Anything that requires a cast charge on you, like the Curse Staff E Explosion, Bolt Casters E, any of that stuff is completely negated. Oh no, a Bolt Casters, boop! And now it can't shoot you anymore, because this thing has incredibly low cooldown. 24.21 seconds. Every 24 seconds, I'm lasering. Now, we have three abilities on the face scale rope, and because we're wearing cloth, we deal even more damage, okay? We are a tad bit tiny squishy with this thing on, but um, our entire set is either Avalonian or, uh, I don't know, mist grade quality, I guess you could say, except for offhand, which is just a torch. But uh, essentially, we, we have higher HP than normal against similar geared opponents, which is great. So, the face scale robe has three abilities. The ring of fire. Let's say I'm getting jumped by a bunch of melee dorks. Oh no, ring of fire, boop. And now, and now they can't leave the circle for a bit. They're burning. They're feared when they touch that fire. And a lot of people are zug zug brained and they will run repeatedly into the wall of fire, dealing even more damage. So the damage, it's not the highest, all right? It's 817 magic damage over three seconds, and that can be reapplied a bunch of times, if they're stupid. But also, it just acts as a nice little, like, like breathing room. If they're melee, you pop this, you heal, and now you're back to full health and they're burning on fire. And they will panic, they will see you healing, and they will zug zug brain right into the fire, thinking they can stop you. Next up is the second ability, the Storm Shield. This is absolutely great for everybody that runs some sort of stupid AoE attack. You'll see Hellion Jackets, you'll see, uh, not really Spectre Jackets, though in the clip there was a guy with the Spectre Jacket, I don't know what he was doing. But you just pop this, boom! You have the armor now of a plate user, okay, with the health. This thing deals damage when people hit you, 117 magic damage every single time they hit you, and it stuns them for one entire second, and the higher tier you have, the more stun it technically does, because uh, what, what's going on is you're going to be constantly interrupting them. Like, if a Bo Badon shoots their e, e into you, and I have, you know, this thing active, they're done. I'm just going to stand in it, they're going to take a ton of damage, I'm going to be stunning them, they're going to be, you know, stunned stuck in this thing, taking damage, taking damage from my auto attacks, my laser beams, and my invis auto attacks, while I have a heal queued up, because this heal doesn't require me to channel or cast, it's instant cast, it is a slight delay, and uh, also at the same time, you know, uh, you know, because they don't have any spells or they're stunned, I could heal while they're stunned, you saw it in the clip earlier, this thing is absolutely amazing, and it's a cooldown of only 24 seconds, that's the beast of this build, is that you just have cooldown reduction for days. My E spell, 16 seconds. This is almost a 1,000 health heal. It would be 1,000 health if I had 8.4 or more spec. I don't have spec in this weapon. You watched a clip of me kicking everyone's butts. I have 100 spec and maybe like 20 in the others, 14 in that one, 11 in that one. I am barely spec'd up in this bad boy. So that is another selling point of this amazing and awesome build. And finally, my favorite ability... On the armor is the Frozen Fragments. This is pure offensive just destruction. So what this does, it does take a little bit to queue up, but uh, this makes people panic. Now that I have five of these orbs, every time I deal damage, one of these icicles will shoot out to the enemy. Not only will it deal 204 magic damage, but it's also going to take a maximum percentage of their life away, their max and current, minus 3% times 5, that is... 15% of their health gone. So for for my character, because I have nearly 4,000 HP if I was fighting myself, that's an additional, uh, let's see, 
I think that's, uh, hold on. I'm just going to pull out a calculator. 39.24 and then minus 15%. That's 588.6 damage on top of the 1,000 total magic damage. So, you know, that's basically a health nuke. That's half my HP from one ability gone, right? And um, when you reduce a target's maximum HP, you reduce their effectiveness of their healing. So look at this. When you drink a healing potion, check it out. It restores 18% of your maximum health over 9 seconds. Well, if you're lacking, you know, 15% of your max health, you're going to be healing less. Anything that, uh, you know, also another way that it affects your healing is if you do flat healing. So let's say uh, my HP is reduced and I heal myself for 950, right? And then when my HP normalizes and goes back to normal, that heal that I just cast is cut by 15%. That's just how it, it, it essentially works. So you really want to just, uh, this thing is, it's just so fun. It's, it has answers to everything you fight. Now, again, its weaknesses is you can't chase people, but if you're locked into duel, you can't really run away from it. So it's great for dueling people in town for money. Uh, also, for fighting over chests, people will fight to the death over these damn things. They spawn in the open world, you, you get your butt over there, you can 1v4, 1v5, 1v6 people. Maybe not 1v10. Maybe if they're in gank sets and fear sets and CC sets, you can't really move too much. But hey, as long as you can pop that heal off while you're stunned, boom, there you go, you got some health. You know, you get a little bit of breathing room, pop everyone back, pop another heal, go in viz, run into some mobs, you know, and you're... It's this is a this is the hardest build in the game to fight. Uh, it's not the hardest to run from because it can't really chase you. But if if one of these is camping a chest, it's over. Like you go into the mists, one of these guys is at the chest. Forget about it. You know you can maybe hover around them like a little rat, but you're not gonna be able to man mode this dude. This build can stand its own ground. This build. D -d -d dominates in PvP. You gotta try it out. It's great. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Soul Benji. Please leave a like on the video because people will want to bury this video. They will not want you to see how overpowered and fun this build truly is. And it's it, a lot of people, you know, start with Druidic Staff. So it, it fits a lot of new players' builds. It's pretty cheap to build up to this gear. I mean, maybe not 8.4, but 8.3 is totally cheap. Only 4.8 million. I mean, go 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 gather for five hours. You're Boom. You got your weapon, okay? Uh, you don't have to go for 8.4, but uh, I, I did because I can afford it. You know, 8.3 is fine for yellow zones. If you're not in yellow zones, you can use 5.1. If I had to fight this in, like, a solo dungeon, and I was using 5.1 anything else, I'm dead. I, I would not be able to kill this in a 1v1. I would have to run away. And, uh, you know, just you don't have to use expensive food or expensive potions or anything either. It, it, this build just slaps. It's awesome. It's great. Thank you so much. Finally, before you go, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what build you think can beat this. Okay, I'll tell you right now. A uh, dagger pair one shot build can one shot this build. Yes, a dagger a dagger pair eight point four can deal over four thousand damage to a cloth user, and we don't have any immunities. So you would have to be skillful and pop this bad boy when you think the dagger pair is about to stab you. That's the only way you're beating them. All right, that's the only counter. Anyway, that's all I got. On the right side of your screen right now, there is a video that you should absolutely click, and if you don't click it then you're going to get a cavity in your teeth. You're just going to get a cavity, and uh, yeah, it's going to suck, and it's going to cost money, and it's going to hurt. Sorry, man, so click the video, or you're getting a cavity.